Hey, I was gonna do a day and night cycle with weather. Yeah, so I put a basic little thing here. I'm also building a controller and camera system. <coughs> It's here. It's not completed yet. That's that's a totally different tutorial. Anyways, here we have uh, some trees, just because it's pretty, and you know a sun. And the sun looks really crappy. So the, the first thing, before anything, I'm bringing in post processing, and then on the camera, on this main camera, I am going to add a post-processing layer and a volume you don't have to put the volume on the camera <coughs> but I'm just making a global volume like you might want to put it as an object doesn't really matter where it is so I'm just gonna say a new post-processing volume the other thing is I like to put my camera on a different layer um, usually I use a transparent FX I don't know why you shouldn't um, I'm gonna use its own layer you probably should uh, you don't have to um, so let's choose that layer so let's add some post processing because if we want uh, certain things such as that Sun not looking so crappy we're gonna want To play with this a bit you know probably don't want to go too excessive but we'll we'll do something and do 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 what else sure let's put on some screen space reflections deferred I usually run in deferred so that's not an issue defer to find to be uh, much better in performance. It's a lot easier on shadows. And let's add. You know, you know what I. Well, I should always add ambient occlusion. Can't make nothing without ambient occlusion. All right. Let's just pump that up a little. And what else should we add? I. You know. And this is just my personal preference. Um, I like to add a little bit of color grading to things mainly the saturation I do a little bit of contrast too but I know I just I like to have a little boost in my saturation and just a touch of concentration to me it just it kind of makes things pop a little better don't have to do it. I mean, it, 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 it. I think it takes away from the real realism of it, maybe. But I think it looks cool, so I do it anyways. Uh, what else can we play with here? Let's bring up our lighting window and dock that over here, and let's go turn on fog. God, that's way too high. I guess that's probably pretty good. We can adjust all those colors later. Um, I actually like to bring this thing down a little bit. I don't like to have it fully out there. Put that in there. Uh, I'm going to make a new skybox just so we can modify it. Like I'll still use the default one. Oh, let's make a folder. So I'm just going to create a new material. And we'll just call it our sky. And click on it and change this to skybox procedure procedural. And then I can just drag it in there. All right. So nothing really changes on it. Per se, but now we can we can go and we can you know adjust you know various things on it. I 
and we can adjust, you know, obviously the, the atmosphere thickness. Sky tint and all that fun stuff. I don't have a grass or I'd put a grass down too. So what would we need if we want a time system? Let's let's make a time manager. Dun dun dun. And in that, let's add an FSM. So the first thing we need to do is literally just worry about time. We're not gonna worry about spinning anything, uh, adjusting fogs, lights, or anything. We're just time. What is time? All right. So I went to the ecosystem and grabbed uh, a thing called Remap. Pull Remap. And this really, really handy one called Modulo, which kind of gives you the remainder of a number. I grabbed both of them float and the int. All right, so what is time? Well, time is going to be merely a float variable called time. And we can add, well, we'll say, you know, uh, we can even make this a, a variable. We'll call this time rate. There we go. And just so that we can see time rate, let's stick it over here so we can control it in the inputs. Now we have time rate. <coughs> and we have a total time. So what am I gonna do? I am going to float, no, I'll use, I'll use the int module, int module. And if I take time, to convert it to an int, and every 60, so it loops zero to 60. So it's, it's kind of like, kind of like clamping it, but it, or kind of like a loop, I guess but it does something else for us that's really neat and that we're going to store that as seconds right and I'll, I'll show you what that what that does just those two actions alone so our time rate so one would be every one second is one second right pretty simple right so we have our seconds here as an integer and if i take the time rate up to like let's say 50 Bring it down a bit. Um, you can see my seconds stop at 60. It only goes 0 to 60, but it loops over and over and over again. But we still have the total amount of time. Key. Very key. Alright, so now what if we did an end operator? Right? Because time. Uh, divided by 60 would be our minutes every frame but I also want a module down here because I want um, my minutes to loop and I'm going to store it back into minutes right and we can now add that over here let's bring our seconds over there as well uh, let's put our time rate at 10. Now we can see we merely have our seconds. Our seconds have ticked up. We now have a minute. Right, so we're 1 minute, 40 seconds. Alright, and we can adjust this all we want. Um, technically, number wise, we can go backwards in time too. All right. All right. Cool. So now we have minutes. All right. So let's get another operator. And we'll take time. So if dividing by sixty gives us minutes, then sixty times sixty divided by will give us our hours. And we'll get another int modulo. 
put it down here. Hours by 60, store into hours. And now we have hours. And if we do that again, right? So if that's our hours, times that by 24, um, that is our days. Right, so int modulo that guy. I'm missing from here. Hours. It should only be 20. Totally missing something here. So if that's our hours, our hours, oh yeah, by 24. It's only 24 hours in a day. Um, all right, so let's do that. Times 60. So that's our hours. Times that by 24. That's our days. So days, um, well, I guess 365, store into days, and yeah, let's give that a whirl. So let's speed this up, so we are to see our seconds. Speed it up more. Our minutes are climbing. We'll speed it up super fast. Now we're now we're starting to see hours. Let's take this up to some ludicrous speed. All right, and we'll see this hours turn into days at 24. And now we have that. And technically, if you know, if we were to take this up like that, um, we would we could keep going and do years as well. All right, but it will loop at the 365. So we have this kind of neat little solid little time system, and that's all this FSM is really going to do is just that. So, now we have that. So we're literally just going to, we're gonna put this, uh, let's put it at 30 for now. So that's time. We now have time, okay? So what about, um, actually, you know what? Let's, let's make a normalized time as well. Uh, let's take int operator and we'll take say our hours I do hours hours or minutes uh, maybe minutes right and we're going to divide it by the total number of minutes in a day right so we have 60 Day length and of course float wrap. Day length. So I'm trying to get the math in my hand here. So there's sixty seconds to a minute. Sixty okay, so we times it but Okay, so seconds times 60 times P minutes. Like, I'm pretty sure that's all that is. All right? I guess that would be the max value, not the min value. Because we also want it to, to kind of loop. We don't. We don't want it to kind of keep running over day length. All right, 
right, let's speed this up. Right, so we have hours. Yeah, okay, yeah, 1440. And then it'll loop. So, okay, so that, that'll work fine. Okay, so now that we have day length, now we can float operator day length divided by 1440. That is our normalized time at, at, at a good resolution. Right, because that will give us. resolution now of yeah, looking a lot better so now our we have this this thing that we could play with and that will become very 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 useful right so this little part here is kind of our normalizing that's all the days we just have the operator wrap and operator all right so now that we have that we need to let's rotate our sun and we're going to put an empty as our sun and i'll put the light as a child to that and just set it all to zeros and there's one tiny issue here and it, it's actually pretty easy to to work out let's call this sun so what's this thing going to do? We are going to um, get FSM. We can get the float, I suppose. That might be, we can get our, we can get the time. No, yeah, from the time, let's get our normalized time. All right, so. <clears throat> another let's we'll do some more math because we aren't having fun if we aren't doing math so we'll give us our hour in normalized time and then the hour Right, so at that point in time, we should have gone a lot higher. Those minutes divided by sixty. You know, that's working. So that would give us 360 degrees. All right, some minutes. There we go. So the normal time, the normal time divided by 60. And then the minutes divided by 60 multiplied. Why can't we just do this? Wouldn't that give us the exact same thing? Yes, it would. All right. There we go. Sorry, it's early. I'm quitting smoking. I haven't smoked now for like two months, two and a half months, but I have a vape once in a while. Take a hit on that thing. A lot better than smoking. Alright. Okay, so now we have that. 
pain in the ass that is. What variables aren't we using? Let's get rid of those. Let's clean that up. So, we get the time. We put it in the minutes. And we do the multiplication for the angle. So, Euler and set vector 3. So, if this one's are going to be our rotation, every frame, let's set angle. I like to use Euler's, they're just better. Um, Quaternion and set rotation. Move to the bottom. And we want to rotate our sun by our quaternion that we have made. And now we should have. Now this is going to have a slight issue and it, really easy to fix. Um, but you can see it's. This thing is now going. Now, you'll find an issue is it's hour four. And it's like, what the hell? And you'll find that once we get over to uh, let's see that again. So at hour 24, so we're at midnight, and we are where's our sun? Our sun's just over there, right? So there's obviously an angle issue, which is why I put of this thing as a child because we're just going to rotate that thing down like that because now he's down there because now uh, let's go 6,000 you see dawn happens you know roughly about seven o'clock sure that's great We get up to the 12 o'clock range, and you know, he's you know, way up there in the middle of the sky. Perfect. Right, so it's just a matter of rotating this guy down that 90 degrees. Alright, so now it's all dark and spooky. Now, Let's and we, we could actually add another one of these. We can actually rotate this guy 180, right? Take this guy so he's got that kind of orangey glow. Sure, this guy can have more of a, a blue glow, and his intensity could probably be you know much less. And for now, we'll turn him off. Well, actually, technically, for the time of day, it is flip it around. Um, So we have a moon and we have our sun. Let's call this one our celestials. Alright, so that said, now we have uh, we can base this off of angles, but let's um Let's call this lights. So, actually, you know what? We should, we should make one for the events. I think that would probably be a smarter thing. Okay, so, let's, in this guy, let's get FSM int. And we're going to go into our time and we're going to pull out our hour. So there's our hour. And we can simply say int changed. So if hour has changed, we have a new hour. All right, and we're going to come over here. For now, it's going to come straight back. Now we could also um, uh, 
if our, I suppose we could also do this as well. I mean, we, we could, we, eh, because you could do it on day change as well. You can just get the FSM day. Um, but, okay, so if hour is greater, no, it would never be greater because it would hit 24 to instantly go back. So we would have to, you know what, let's do this. Set int value. New variable called last hour. And that's going to be equal to hour. Right? So, this guy, if last hour was equal to 23, it is now a new day. And if he is less, then we're just going to continue. We don't need to do anything. And if it's a new day, then we have a different event. Right? So here we have new day. This one's a new hour. So I think the easiest way to do that is let's add a array. I didn't bring them in. So let's bring these things in. What? Don't tell me there's not a ray maker there. Fucking lie to me. So, we're going to use the events of this kind of like, I don't know, I guess kind of like a, a callback method style that you'd see in coding. So that this is, it'll, it'll be more of a fire and forget style thing. All right, so we're going to make two proxies. And one could be day and one could be hour. And all we're going to do is when we go into it the day, let's array list send events to. an event um, we're gonna go to the day list and the event is we'll send new day exclude self we don't want to send it to ourselves and over here same thing but obviously we're not gonna do the day one we're gonna do the hour we'll call it new hour there we go so now we, we don't have to worry about anything right and if we wanted to we could also set event properties which I've learned something because some people don't have event sent event properties or this set event data is kind of there and stuff like you get the two different things the event properties is so much better um, what I've learned is the set event properties is in the array maker. So we're going to set int, um, we want to do hour. Do I want to set that? Yeah, we should, but, but that kind of gives us a little bit of an issue. Because if it's hour 24, well, no, that should be fine. Right? And then if we go up here, if it's a new day, we can set time. We, we could literally just send 24. It's a new day, the hour is 24, I suppose. And then that will no, make sure these sets are above that. 
right? So now, all right, so now add an FSM, we'll call this one light. All right, so <clears throat> this guy is, uh, no, let's call him Sun and Moon instead. So he is going to, um, forward event, no, all right, let's, because uh, we're excluding ourselves, you know what, so be it. We're going to put this guy on the Celestials. Ah, I will outsmart you, myself. Sun and Moon. Alright, so now we can get Owner, which we'll just store as ourselves. And then Array List Add. And we're going to go to our Time Manager and the References. We'll do the hour and type game object add self. All right. And then this guy needs an event for new hour. All right. And we can get event properties. Type and and there's our hour. So this guy, Celestials, registers himself with the event system that we've built here. Alright, and if we take this this thing up, we should see an event will fire now automatically. To everyone that registers with this event system so this celestials will now get this event every hour and same with everything else so if you can have an AI or objects or whatever you want in your scene be like I need to know when the hour changes they can just register register themselves with the event system and you can do it with the hour and with the day all right oh I forgot to check I'm sitting right there, literally on my screen. I didn't even look at it. Right, so when an hour happens, um, we're not getting the hour. So let's see. So I would have assumed. That is going. It is not. Oh, I called it time, not hour. Well, that would be our mistake. There he goes. Now we're getting the hour. I call it time. Yeah, make sure those keywords. I, I really wish they used some sort of static thing where <clears throat> almost like an enum you can do for those just so you can't spell them wrong or get them wrong. That'd be nice. All right, so every time there's an hour. All right, so what are we, why are we doing that? And compare. So if, if hour is we'll say six greater equal or greater that will just say greater um start day right and we'll also have this is here where we can have one where if it is eight t 
18, if it's greater than 18, we can start night. All right, so what is day and night? So if we're gonna start day, what we want to do is get intensity, get light, light. There is no get light intensity, there's only set light intensity. Well, what the ever shit is that? Get light intensity. just weird that it wouldn't be there by default all right so let's we're gonna get the light intensity of the moon so moon intensity and we can get the yeah we'll, we'll just get the moon so we're gonna get the moon now we're going to float inter Interpolate. Actually, you know what? Do we want to do that? Do we, I don't know if we want to do the light like this or we want to do it on a curve. I think a curve would probably be a little better, a little more control. But, alright, so that means let's just deactivate the moon and activate the sun and over here we'll do the opposite activate the moon and deactivate that all right now let's do one for the actual physical intensity and this one will be a little different um, is we want to get FSM float. This one we're going to want the time, the normalized time, right? So this is where the normalized time really comes into play. Because now we can do sample curves. And not that they have to be zero to one, but um, it does just make it easier. So let's call this moon intensity. So essentially what we're saying is we're going to get the normalized time from zero to one, and it's going to match this intensity. So zero um, would be midnight, right? So this intensity of the moon we'll say put it down to I don't know say roughly 0.6 um, but towards uh, I guess it wouldn't even be that because that would be 12 so well I guess this needs to be here anyways this one would also need to be point, point 0.6 and at 1 so that means roughly, and you can you can break this all up in the math. Um, so if 0.5 would be roughly 12 o'clock, right? So 0.25 would be roughly six o'clock. And we want to make sure our light is getting dimmer at that point in time. And the same idea on this side only at the 0.75 range, somewhere in there. And you can adjust these out all you want to provide you out, right? So that's our moon intensity. So now we can and moon intensity, that one's gonna be every frame. All right, so then the other thing we would do is we literally copy this whole bit, and this is gonna be our sun intensity. Mm -hmm. 
And obviously the curve is going to look a lot different. Pretty much the opposite. Because um, he's going to be way down here. And these guys will be way up here. But, let's take this guy. Let's put a key right somewhere in the middle. Um, let's go up to like a 1.4, 1 1.5 or somewhere in there at the 0.5. So at noon, he's peaking. Right, but then we also know at this guy at the time of 0.75, he needs to be pretty low. Not too low, but pretty low. So we'll put him down to like there. Yeah, let's flatten that curve out a bit. Like that. And same thing on this guy, but we're going to go 0.25 and 0.7. Flatten his curve out a bit. Alright, and then we'll set the sun to the sun intensity. Alright. So now Let's get over to our time manager and jump this guy up. Let's go like 4,000. And we can see where is our sun. We don't even know where our sun is. Hello, Mr. Sun. over there. All right. His intensity needs to definitely climb higher. Be higher quicker. Oh yeah, see, because now he's there. They're not turning on and off, so let's, we need to check that out. But that bar bring him down. Slow him down. So the intensity so at normalized time so at oh yeah because I because we moved it the celestials by negative 90 right so I guess yeah kind of makes sense we have to adjust everything to, to fit that 90 Because at 0 0.5, he is way down there, right? So at 0 0.5, he needs to be zero. These guys need to be 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 and let's... This guy would be at a time, say, 0.25, which is when the sun would be coming up, and we can curve it like that, maybe. Um, I don't know, where did I... What's his value at? 1.1? Sure. And if you close it and open it, it kind of rescales itself just for you automatically. So the moon, that would mean uh, at 0.5, he's actually at the highest. So this guy, let's go 0.7, 0.7. Take these guys, and these guys go to like 0.1. those out a bit. Alright, so that should solve that. Now let's see what happened here. So 
he is firing and of course we oh yeah because I guess the events are Mind you, I guess, yeah, if you put the time up too high, it could, I guess, skip over that, right? Obviously, we'd have to go in it and adjust these intensities, play with these curves a little bit, uh, set the values up. But not too worried about that right now. Um, I'm sure you guys can tweak and play with that all until your heart's desire. Um, so. What, we'll have to do a slight modification, I guess, for the um, for different weather. So that's fine. Um, we can also multiply it too. So, what do we want? Normalized time. So let's enable fog. Set fog density. We might as well bring this guy in this thing. We, we could do another FSM for him, but nah, fuck it. So all we're going to do is we're just going to sample curve. Right, and again, this guy, he's going to be sampling at the normal. And we'll store him as a fog. Every frame. And we'll set him as a fog. Now, this guy, the value is much less. So essentially, we're going to want to follow... Uh, the moon, right? So we're kind of high and we peak down. And not with ones. Uh, the value is going to be like 0 0.01. 0 0.001. Low amounts. Right? But then let's, you know, bring it over here and like go 0 0.025. You can go 0 0.03. You know, and then we could also if you really want a dark night and stuff. There's a few things you gotta change, but um So yeah, color ramp. So here we have, and <clears throat> we we could you could do these with the sky too. You can do all sorts of these. Let's let's just go with two. So we're gonna go with like a dark nighttime, two more of the the daytime, right? And that can be fog color. And every frame, and we're going to sample that at normal. Oh yeah, right, this one works a little different with the... Now you, you can use curves with the color, uh, and then adjust the color values based on the curve. Um, but what I'm going to do here is just say... Take this guy up to like a thousand. Right. 
right? Because you, you got to think like this. This normal is kind of ticks through these at like a lurping value. That fog density is pretty high. They're definitely pretty high. All right. So we know at So at the 12 o'clock mark, oh. oh, why is the sun not? I feel like I should be like that. Did I rotate the wrong thing when I originally set that up? I must have. Well, now I have to adjust it. Bitch. So. Did I rotate the wrong way? at right about here six o'clock the light just comes up so where is our light sun is over there no that's that's right with him at 90 all right let's say we'll have to adjust the, the intensities and stuff like that but and obviously that fog density is just insanely high So time manager, so at 12, hopefully there, we can see our sun is directly pointing down, that's perfect, so he's at 12, alright, so let's go with uh, 5 of those different colors, so we know at the point 5, we want him to be roughly there right so these guys can just be slightly darker on each side and kind of fade into the little darkness you can kind of add as many gradients there as you want right so <clears throat> the point five which is noon it'll the fog color will be there all right, so let's now adjust the take that up. All right, let's go to six o'clock, roughly when the sun we'd want to start coming up. So at 0.25, the sun's coming up. All right, so sun coming up, 0.25. Yeah, so you know what? We did have that right originally. I'm just going to adjust these down so the moon would be more like this. So at 0.25, the sun's coming up. So he can climb up like that. Those can go back down. Yeah, almost painting like a little ghost or something there. <laughs> Alright, so let's adjust that down. And then let's play with the fog here. So we want the fog here to be higher and here to be lower.
right, so we're getting a nice bright day. Sun goes down, fog kind of comes in. And he is not at the 90. He is not at the negative 90. Oh, well, I've changed the position. I don't know what I meant to do that. 90 and negative 90. Alright, so now that fog color's got to change. We have that. Let's take it up to 12. Alright, let's get it into our celestials. color there is fine, but the density is so high. Alright, oh yeah, I guess it's because I, I did the change in the edit mode. Not in the Mind you, I'm still, you know, not in the fucking. There we go. And, okay, let's see what that's starting to look like. We still have to adjust the color that fog though. But the fog density should be a lot better. Alright. There's our morning. I mean we might want a little more fog density kind of at that just as the sun breaks. But again that's something that you can play and tweak with. Not too worried about the exact specifics. Alright. And then when the sun goes down the fog kind of start kicking in. And the, so the fog color needs to darken though. We're sampling here. Like I think this. Let's slow that down here. Right. Um, these I think these gradients. We might have to add another gradient. Don't want to go right pitch black. Things look just a little off when it's too black. Okay, so that would that would technically be noon. That guy, this guy could be a little.
right so we're gonna have bog color so we want okay the alpha can stay up uh, these guys can actually all be the same value um, Because we're just we're just going white white to black, right? So we need a new sample curve, and that's going to be some color value. So that would mean uh, during the day we want the values to be one, so that will give us white or pr pretty pretty close to one. Not to be exactly one. Something like that, and then you know, of course, during certain peak periods of times, like the, you can actually adjust. You can split those up so you can have like the fog color turn orange and whatever that is. Like you can sample curve three of them, and control each one individually. darkening enough right that's really all that is these need to be quicker it would help if we actually did that. So now we have some proper fog coloring happening. It lightens up. <laughs> So that, don't forget to do that. Um, that should be fine. Light is another good one. Um, I wonder if I could just use that fog color for that one. Because that's going to give... I don't know if this is controlling that or not.
That's the one we really want to control there. I think I have to make a custom action for that one. I can do that one later on, but... Let's just turn it down for now. I don't know if that's I don't even know if that's the right ambient light. Um Alright, so there's there's that so far. So we have an event system, we go time and day. Um just for shits and giggles. I don't think I have the Text Mesh Pro actions in here. Alright, so I'll, I'll change that. You know what? I'll just, I'll just bring in a normal text. If you have Text Mesh Pro, just use Text Mesh Pro. What I'm going to show you, the logic itself isn't going to be any different. Uh, let's just take that up like that. Best fit, stick it in the middle. And what I'm going to do here is we want to get address M ints because we want from the time. We want the seconds, every frame, paste, we want the minutes, paste, we want the hours, alright, and then we want to build a string. We have a bunch of different parts. So, what are we going to have? We're going to have hours. And then we can have a one of those. And then we can have a minutes. And do we do the point? Or do we do that? Let's do the point. And we need one more. And convert the seconds. And don't add to the end, and that's our time frame. And then this is when you would set the text mesh pro, but I don't have it in there right now, so I'm just going to set the normal text with that string. You can also format those so it's a zero zero. That might look a little better. Let's anchor him to the corner. I don't want him moving any farther. I want him to sit right where he's at. Sit there and sit in the corner. Get in the corner and behave. Give you a whooping. Right. Uh, da, da, da. Format string. Um, convert int to string. Let's do that. Alright, so let's convert the hours. Um, we'll call it hours string. And let's go with zero, 00. And now we can just use hour string. Copy and paste. Let's do minutes. 
and minute string. Zero zero as well, and minute string. Seconds can stay there. I don't care about seconds. That should look a little better. There we go. Now it looks like an actual legitimate timer. Uh, maybe we should bore mass. It's not ticking back and forth like that, eh? Nah, whatever. I'll let you guys do that. Alright, so now we have a time. Let's save that. Alright, so what about um, weather? Weather effects, right? So that's kind of where the celestial guy something like not so much this one he's just turning on and off but this one here uh, would actually change right so I don't know if it would be better to maybe do this and have empties like this one could be sunny And copy that guy and paste him there. Now let's get rid of him. Alright, so now we have a sunny weather. And you know, we can get a rainy. Obviously wouldn't those all wouldn't be activated at the same time, but so these intensities, the fogs and all that, we would obviously want to adjust those values, right? Definitely. Um, but I almost wonder if That means a weather change would be pretty uh, non-blendy, I guess you could say. Right, where we could um, for example, let's copy him and paste him here. Um, let's not do any of this stuff so we're not going to do that one we're not going to do those we're not going to do that but we'll keep that and that and those and that not at the samples and in fact we don't need to normalize time we're just going to set Right now, this guy would mean we get the times and we sample curves, but we're not setting. We're not going to set the intensities. And we are not going to set the density or the fog. Same with on this guy. just sample right so this guy would have to choose what weather we want and then grab those values and bring it in so let's do a he is set full so we would obviously need to get FSM floats, and I'm just going to use one of these for now, but that value is going to change, so we need the light intensity, and that's the sun intensity, and let's get another one. Sun intensity. We need the moon intensity. And we want the 
default color value. We want the fog. And get FSM. Is there a color? Oh, there is a color. Look at that. Thought we might have to do an object, but apparently not. It is there. So fog color. There we go. So this is going to be our chosen. It's our chosen one. Our chosen one. Alright, so which out of the chosen, that's what we're going to select. And we're going to take all that stuff and then we're going to set all that stuff. So I guess that really should be at the bottom. Right? So this is we've now chosen one of our weather presets and we can even make an array um could do a could do an array list be a better option yeah. so many different ways of doing it weather we have rainy now the only thing we have, don't have is things like wind in the particles um, that we will have to deal with. So if we have a, um, we'll get an event called change weather. And it, he's a global event. Yes, okay, we totally get that. It comes down here and it says change weather. We would need, because we would be in here. Um, so we would almost need to get these values and blend over while we're setting them, if that makes any sense, right? So let's default the chosen to sunny, right? So we've changed weather, and now what we really need to do is we need to get FS, get array, get, right? So we're going to go through our weather, and we're going to get our new chosen. going to be our new weather. So as we now get all of this stuff, we need to get it again, only from the new weather. to get it from the old weather which I guess we really don't need to do because we're gonna already have it there so let's let's not do that okay so but the thing is we need a whole new set of variables right so new Sun intensity right we have a new moon intensity you know we have a new fog color value. We have a new fog. Um, and we have a new fog color. Right? And essentially what we want to do is these don't need to be well, maybe they should. Uh, no. Well, uh, yeah, they should. Right, so what we want to do is we want to now interpolate after we've got all this stuff and we we can do it, oh, we'll just do it li 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 
linearly lin fuck it um, from the for example fog to the new fog and how long of an interpolation do we want? Uh, let's go say three seconds. And we could store that into uh, let's store it into fog. Go from fog to new fog, store it into fog. Sounds good. And then let's copy that and paste it because we want uh, fog color value to new fog color value store in fog color value so then we need moon intensity to the new moon intensity store in the new moon intensity there's going to be a lot of actions in this guy Alright, so we have oh, not new fog, uh, sun intensity to new sun intensity, store into sun intensity. Alright, so sun intensity, moon intensity, fog, color, fog. I think that's everything. And then we also want to set while we're doing that whole bit down here. And then on this last one, I'm going to say finish. Uh, I, I don't know why I just didn't use a finished event. Whatever. And then we can go back to set name. Well, not, not quite. Um, so now we have to set game object. The chosen is the new weather. And then we can come over here. So, what is change weather? Now, we, we might even want to not actually have that there and instead have it here. Um, right? And say array get random. Or you can do a weighted value. Uh, there's a lot of different ways we can do this part. But we're going to store it as the new weather. And then we can go into that guy. Right, so let's go like this. Let's now we could run a chance. Um, we could run something here, right? Um, where what is this guy going to do? He is going to um, get owner. Array list add right because we want to register ourselves in the say new hour right and we want to add ourselves to the time manager the hour list type game object we're going to register ourselves and then when we register ourselves we can now get the new hour and then maybe in here we can just say um, you know random int or random event uh, you can do all sorts of different randoms uh, we'll just call it r for random and int compare if if R is say greater than you know 70 which weather and then we can send event to ourselves to the light intensity I guess that's what we called it to change weather so okay let's let's adjust this a little bit now um, right so if this is the rainy uh, let's say let's say 
let's bring the sun intensity down a bit. We're going to want to go a little excessive so it becomes a little more noticeable. But you probably wouldn't you know, take this to this extreme. Um, and let's bring the fogs up. said the, these colors we, we, we could run a sample curve for each different colors then you could totally adjust it and have like a a green fog or red fog you know, blood moon eh, kind of idea right um but okay so uh let's what about a particle effect let's make a quick uh particle system right Let's just stick him. If you've never made a particle system, they're actually not that hard. Relatively fun to do. Right? So I am going to set his rotation and everything to something like that. I am going to give it a shape. Let's not do a cone. Let's do a box. And its scale can be like 20 by 5 by 20 and position let's put it up like 10 20 sure something like that all right uh, emission let's ram that up to like 400 and let's take the speed We're gonna give it a gravity. Something like that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, let's go like two. Good, good, good. Missions. Why is that so silly? Uh, lifetime. Let's go bring that down. S start speed zero. We don't want any start speed. Uh, you could have these actually die or whatever on collision. Not that worried about it right now. Something like that. I want to see how this kind of looks over the player. Let's put them like that. And do, do, do. is that the default particle? It is the default particle. All right. Let's give that some start size. Let's randomize that to a point one to a point two. Point zero five to a point one. That looks a little better. I don't even know if I want like that. I mean, it looks all right like that, but I think a trail would be a little better. Uh, if you've never dealt with the trails, they're actually not too bad. Let's make a material. Rain. So what kind of shader are we using? We're using a particle shader and it is, we'll say unlit. It is transparent. Multiply is fine. And let's go with the default particle. And come over here and we go back into the render. And now that we've got this guy ticked, this guy shows. And we can say the trail, we want this guy. All right. Like that's just the default particle. Like there's nothing fancy about that. But now it's got like the, like the streaky look to it. Um, let's... You know, and if we wanted to now, now, we can go into this render and say none. And we don't even know the particle, we just got the, the uh, streaks. So let's go... Trails. Ratio part. If you go ribbon, it's all crazy. Don't do that. Uh, world space. 
stretch. Stretch is good. Fx width. Yes, fx width. There's a lot of different things we can do here. Um, probably don't need to play with it too much. But let's go, let's just give it a hint of blue. Just a, just a hint. You know what, let's go with the gradient. Um, oh my god, what did I do? So let's bring the alpha down. Down, 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 down. And then over here, let's just bring it down a little bit. And then, then let's play with the color a little bit. Let's just give, just like they said, just a hint of blue. Not much, just, just a hint. Right, something like that. And. Just because of the the aging and stuff. Not that we want to like go crazy with it. <coughs> uh, velocity over lifetime. Like, you, know, you can give it a little bit of say orbital. That you know, obviously the wrong axes there. Uh, way too much. Not enough. World. As you can tell, you can do you can do a lot of crazy things. Something like this. You could you could almost attach these these whole things themselves. All right, no, we don't really want to do that though. Um, would be the best because I mean we, we could we can instantiate it over the player and tell them to follow the player. Let's just give it a particle and let's go into our weather system here. Alright, so when we change weather and we have this new weather, let's let's add a particle here. And you could you could add multiple. Um, we'll just call it the particle. I think I named it wrong, but whatever. The sunny isn't going to have one, but we're going to put him there anyways because he could be a null. That's fine. Right. 
so the rainy stick him out there we can now just go like that all right so when we get into here get FSM game object and we can say we're gonna get your particle new particle right and we can say is null because not all weather systems gonna have that particle like if it's sunny it's not gonna have the rain right maybe, maybe it will maybe you'll make a half sunny half rain so if no we're gonna put no and not no get rid of the finish don't need that anymore because we've added on to our system not no so if it's if it's no uh, if it's off as no and just fucking go if it's not no though wait no we, we can't quite do that yet. okay okay so if it's no what we need to do is do another is no um, so this is going to be chosen particle and this one could also have a null and not null actually we can probably put that here let's just move these down stick this over here okay so if if this thing's null if we don't have a new particle we'll come down here now if this thing's null we can just continue on because if we there is no particles playing there's none chosen but if there's one chosen and there's one already playing this one can now say activate i guess or you can destroy it i guess there's a few different ways we can do this the chosen particle can now be deactivated and then it can go sit over there Right, and if it's not null, then we want to mm, kind of want to make sure we do this first, though. Uh, maybe we have two of those, whatever. It's not like it's going to kill us. Not null, so okay, we're not null. So then we look here. So this one's not null. We have a new particle, and this one uh, doesn't have a, and this one doesn't have a particle. All right. So what does that mean? That means set game object, and we can activate game object. Let's activate the new particle and set the chosen particle to new particle and tell him to go here all right now if it's not null however it's a little different right because we're still going to do this stuff i suppose but we now need to deactivate the chosen particle i guess it's really the only difference and then go into here and activate the new particle and set it so that would also mean that when we're setting full uh, let's set get position of we're gonna have to have a player we don't have a player so let's make a player player And of course there's sounds and stuff like that too. We could just keep expanding on this really. Set position. Of our chosen particle to the player's position, world space, every frame. There we go. So the player, which is currently this guy here, 
Uh, get owner. Store self as a global player. There we go. Where are the player? All right. So. Now this player is currently running on. Oh yeah, I guess that's got to start with it off because we are in the sunny, right? His default state is off. Oh, I did something to my player. I messed something up. It's no longer reading my stick. I'm gonna have to blame my child for that one. Whatever, not a huge deal. We don't actually need to move the player around right now. Um, oh yeah, I see my thing's flashing. It's disconnected already. Something, something happened to it. So let's get into our weather. So we have this change weather. So let's see what happens. Um, let's adjust time though. Let's choose a better time to see this stuff happening. that sure so we get in our weather now if I hit change weather right we're gonna have this -doop, it runs through so it grabbed sunny as its new weather lovely oh yeah we have we have the hour thing happening anyways I guess we don't technically need this guy, but well, he's good to test anyway. So let's try it again. Doop. Sunny again. Sunny, sunny, sunny. Why are you choosing sunny like every time? Like, seriously. Sunny, 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 sunny. You can't fool me. There's something not right about that. Now, I'm saying choose random and you're giving me the same answer it's over and over again. Something wrong. And this guy needs to be the chosen, the new chosen. Alright, so that's just weird though. That it is like that. All right, so <clears throat> all, right, all right, let's uh, let's do it a different way then. If it uh, it doesn't want to play ball, we'll uh, we'll play ball. Oops. Sunny and rainy, and we'll add those sunny, rainy. And send random event. We only have two. We have sunny and rainy. And let's just adjust these sliders for our chances, right? So, okay, here's. Now, I've always found this works best when you put the lowest chance ahead. Personally, I don't know why. Right? But hey, whatever. Array get. I guess we don't even need to do that, but whatever. Uh, and that's going to be the new weather. And copy and paste. It's kind of a messy way of doing it, but hey, it'll work. It'll work. Why not? Right. I forgot to turn the rain off again. Mind you, that'd be a good place to put the, the audio too. It wouldn't really blend it in too well, uh, but I mean, I guess you could do things to for that to, to make it work like that. Anyway, it could totally work. Okay, so we change weather, and it chose sunny. Of course it did. Of course it did. Oh, it got rainy that time. Right. So it see how it kind of 
took a time blending there. Uh, but it did not activate anything. So we went in here, it got sunny at index one. What? What's wrong with you people? That, I don't, that's just weird. Okay, you know what? Both of you. I don't know what's wrong with my arrays. Second, it's probably something super simple, super stupid. Okay, new weather is going to be this guy. That's that's what you guys have brought me down to. Yeah. There we go. Alright, so... Oh, you know what? I'm totally setting a value somewhere on it. Because now, new weather is sunny. But we just went down the rainy road. Right? Here I am getting uh, that thing there. Apparently I had that on twice. You have to take it out last time. Alright, so let's try that again. So we are now rainy. There we go, now we're, okay, now we're sunny. Sunny, 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 sunny. Oh, murder you. There we go, rainy. Alright, so we'll go through. It got rainy. Grabbed his particle. The particle is not null. So it look at our particle and it said not no which is not right just messing us up all right so we change weather sunny sunny there we go so now we went from rainy got the particle it is not null so we came over here it the other one was null so we've activated the new particle which no we didn't because it's not activated we've set the chosen and then we've deactivated it this guy here what is this guy doing why is this guy here I he was part of it prior. What? Something weird's about that. Okay. I have still got something a little crossed here. Okay, so we say we have a particle. If the particle is null, the new particle is null, we're going to check our old particle. If it's null, then we just keep going. If it's not null, yeah. If it's not null, then we need to activate the chosen particle to not be null and set game object of the old chosen particle to null. You just kind of leave that like empty like that. And then go in there. All right. And if it's not null, then we game object. Then we check the chosen particle that we currently have. If it's null, we activate the new particle. It becomes the chosen particle. Off we go. If it's not null, we deactivate the new particle. We don't have to set the null because this guy's going to go there anyways. And then that should work fine. All 
Great, so now we are raining. Are we raining? Yep, so we are raining. Chosen particle is, why is it so up there? or something I don't know all right and if you want that to blend a little better on the particles you don't have to deactivate and activate them right away you could uh, um, you can tell it to just stop playing right and if you have it set to world space then it uh, will be It'll 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 almost kind of just die off. I mean, it'd be, still be pretty quick, but it'll die off, right? So we've gone into rain. Um, let's take this up. Of course, it's gonna ramp up, right? Because there's a chance it's gonna flail every time there, uh, uh, like every hour. Uh, Five hundred? Is that too high? Right, so now we have that. apparently sucks. Why it's moving is confusing. Alright, that. The hell? Oh! Because it's a child of the whole system, right? So it's rotating. So it down. Apparently, uh, you should have that uh, not be a child. <laughs> or have this weather system, you know, not be a child. I suppose. Right, and then this could be a child. Like, why is it rotating? It's, it's moving like it's in the sun or something. As it, it was. Of course, now I wonder if my position's messed up on it. Not that it matters. better change weather more often oh well, you know what I think when I moved it I might have broke something in the event I think 800 is pretty good for Just oh, it is still twenty.
finally. Finally. I just not want to. Turns on and off like instantly. Oh, son of a bitch. So there's there's a lot of different things we can keep adding to this. Like there's, <clears throat> yeah, I guess weather. I mean, you you could really extend this far as sounds, audios, wind. Um, the the ambient light would be a nice one. I should I should get that one in there. I just want to see why this is. Unparenting and parenting and rotating and stuff screwed it all up. But it is there. Um, great. And I should probably call this good for real. That's probably a long freaking video. Um, but I, I do kind of want to play with this thing real quick because this this changes the effects so drastically right so let's quickly um, set uh, intensity multiplier spelling doesn't matter on this one category doesn't matter you can call this in you can call it bananas for it really matters all right so we're going to go into this little script. So you're going to learn a tiny bit of scripting on this. If you want to adjust this ambient intensity. You don't have to. Right, because th this is what a state is. So a state is on enter, it's going to do, you know, X. Right, so we would need to get a public variable. We want to FSM float. And then we can call that our intensity. I have an error because I spelled it wrong. Because I do that all the time. I spell everything, which is fucking horrible. Uh, FSM float, two capitals, right? And we want to also, we'll do a bool, not an FSM bool. It can be an FSM bool, but I'm not going to do an FSM bool. I'm just going to do every frame. And then we can do it down here, public override on update. Get rid of the base. And... So this is when the, the state enters. This happens every frame, right? So now we're gonna come down here and say void. Void is like do action um, set stop, right? And we can say render settings dot uh, and ambient intensity is that what it's called intensity multiplier environmental intensity multiplier All right. and then there's there's this one too you can also do it's another good one 
uh, intensity multiplier. So under the environmental lighting, environmental reflections. Reflection intensity uh, equals intensity intensity dot value. We want the value of this guy down here, right? So this one's going to call set stuff, and this one can call set stuff. And what we will do is in the enter is if every frame then just return don't do anything end it there call it good and this one here is if every frame but we're going to put the exclamation mark at the beginning so it flips it so if not every frame then return right just like that So let's just do a quick little check. I'm just going to make a new FSM. I won't bother doing all piles of logic for it. Um, but we can see if we go into the little, now it's created this little folder and we can see it. And we can see, okay, let's tick on every frame and hit play. Zip over to the lighting and we can see the intensity multiplier is zero and now we can adjust it Boop. on our action. Obviously, you wouldn't go very high, but right, like during the day, you might want the, you know, maybe the two. No, probably not a two. Like a one point five, maybe. And during night, you can bring it down. Yeah. Well, wherever, wherever you feel like putting it in, don't matter to me. Alright, let's see what that looks like during the day. During high noon, right? So there's 0.3 and then like there's 1.5, right? I mean, it doesn't seem like it does that much, and during the day it doesn't seem to do that. I mean, it does do something though, right? But uh, where you really, really see it is is at night. Like when you really want games to be dark, like if you're making a horror game or something, like that looks to me kind of silly, right? But when you bring that down, um, that that looks that looks way creepier, right? Having just enough, you can you can see that they're kind of there. Right. You put a tiny bit more there. Like you don't need much. Just just enough to give that hint that there's a big green or something in there. Right? You can you can darken that fog a little bit, maybe it'll make it a little thicker. But you'd have you'd start to have a pretty good feeling. Right? The beauty part with this event system though, the way it's set up is you could put audio in there. Um sounds whatever uh, you can put audio in with the weather as well you could have events here uh, based for like I said like if seven seven days to, to die the, the blood moon phase on day seven <coughs> something like that which could adjust all sorts of colors and do things and play audio but anyways that's probably a long freaking video and there's still tons I can add on to this system but I think this is a good start and I don't want to bury you guys too hard um, for a time and weather system.